Hey there, welcome back. So in the last lab, we brought the ground control information in and really dialed in our 3D uh, stereo model for the Parker Farm area. And where we left off in that lab was we had created a dense point cloud. So in today's lab, we are going to work with that dense point cloud a little bit, try to uh, classify and separate out uh, ground points from vegetation points. And then we're going to create some elevation models from that and do some uh, calculations of uh, area and uh, profile and volume from those surface models. So the very first thing that we want to do, I've opened up the uh, Lab 5 project from last week. And uh, like right off the bat, we're going to go up here to File and Save As. And I'm going to save it as a new project for Lab 6. This is just a good insurance policy in case something goes wrong. Um, we, have, uh, we have a backup copy. Uh, we don't lose work. So, so very first thing, save it as a new project. And once that's done, then um, you see we have this uh, sort of a big area that we uh, created the point cloud for, but, but really the uh, area that we're interested in is, is, is this center portion here. That, that was really kind of where we defined our mission from. And all this other stuff that we get around the edge is just because we happen to have photos that, that overlapped in that area. But the, the model is actually at its best right here in this center uh, spot. So from this point, we're going to actually uh, restrict our analysis to uh, just this area that we're interested in. And we're going to do that by modifying the region uh, in Metashape. And uh, there's some tools for, for doing that. And they're up here on the main toolbar. Um, and we're going to grab the, uh, we'll start with the resize button and then probably end up needing the rotate button at some point. So I'm going to turn that on. And uh, I've actually played around with this, so, so uh, it's already set smaller than it would be by default. But you can see these blue dots here. Actually, if I switch back to my sparse point cloud, you can see them better. Okay, These dots define my region, uh, my analysis region. Okay, And so when you set a region, it's going to um, only do its analysis or only create products within that region that you've created. Okay, And so I'm going to just grab and drag this region out and um, you know, make it about the size uh, from, the, from the road out to just a little bit past the woodlot, make sure I've got it on both sides. Um, I'm going to rotate that a little bit as well so it lines up better with things. Now. It's going to take a while to play around with this to get it to uh, uh, to get it set to where you want it. And, and I do want to point out that this region is three dimensional, right? And so once you've uh, uh, resized it or moved it or rotated it, it's a good idea to spend some time looking at it from different perspectives uh, to make sure that it actually includes all the areas that you're interested in. Okay, uh, let's pull this out a little bit further here. Yeah, that looks about good. Okay, so again, I'm making sure that it's extending below my my uh, ground plane here too. Okay, so uh, so that's pretty good for uh, for defining my my region. Now the uh, next thing that we want to do here, let me turn my dense point cloud back on. Okay, and it's just hard to see the region on the dense point cloud. That's why it's kind of nice to work with the sparse cloud or to just toggle back and forth between them. Okay, um, so our region's defined, and now what we want to try to do is is figure out which of these points in the point cloud actually correspond to a ground location and which point uh, corresponds to a uh, vegetation uh, or, or a not ground point. Okay? And uh, there's some tools in here, or a tool in here, for doing that. And I'll say just right at the beginning that, 
that this is an imprecise uh, uh, science when we're working with these photogrammetric point clouds. And so we're just going to be working solely with the, the sort of geometric relationships of these points to determine which is ground and which is not. Um, you know, if you were uh, using uh, some tools outside of Metashape, um, you might be able to do a more sophisticated approach to classifying your ground uh, points from non-ground points based off of like spectral reflectance and, and some other things as well. Okay, so we're gonna use this tool in Metashape though, and, and we're gonna go up here to Tools. Let me expand my workspace first so we can see what we got. Okay, so Tools, and then I'm gonna go to Dense Cloud, and I'm going to go to classify ground points. Okay, now there's uh, a couple of sort of things that we need to, to talk about here. So um, a point cloud can have uh, any number of classes assigned to the points uh, in the cloud, and they're standard class values that are that are defined by sort of the lidar uh, community, and so. Uh, that these are sort of what are available uh, here. These are the standard classes, okay? And so everything that uh, is in the point cloud right now is, is uh, assigned this sort of created, never classified class. But really, we can just choose any class because we just want to take any point and assign it to either a ground point or not ground point. And I've got three options here, okay? Um, we're going to start uh, big with these uh, parameters here. So let me explain what's going on here. And I'm going to start with the, the last of these options, which is the cell size. And to do that, I'm actually going to cancel out of here for a second and, uh, and sort of illustrate what's happening. So with the cell size, it's going to sort of pass a, uh, a, a, a cell, a moving window over this um, this point cloud here, and uh, within each cell, it's going to find the lowest elevation point and call that uh, its its ground plane, right? Its base plane, and then we're going to evaluate every other point within that cell based off of that base plane. And so, for this to work, we have to have ground uh, area, ground sort of locations in every one of the cells, and so. If we chose a cell that was really, really tiny, say like, uh, um, you know, like that line right there is is seven meters, right? So if I chose a seven meter cell, which is going to be well, I'm not very good at sort of drawing this on the fly, right? But um, but it might be something like like that or a little bit bigger. And so in this case, there's no ground points within that cell, and so that's going to cause me a problem. So I want my cells to be big enough um, so that every cell has some ground in it, okay? And so just by trial and error, the number that I came up with was about 30 meters uh, for a cell. Um, ends up being about the right amount, okay? So that's gonna be about that size. There's a better illustration of this in the document for the, for the lab, and so when it moves each one of these cells across the window, it has some ground points in there against which it can evaluate whether everything else is ground or not ground. Okay, so let's go back to the tool here, dense cloud, uh, classify ground points. Okay, so there's my option of 30 meters. The angle then looks at what is the angle from that, that lowest elevation point to any other point within the uh, uh, within that cell, and if it's greater than that maximum angle, then it's going to say that no, this is a uh, non-ground point. Okay, uh, if it's lower than that angle, then it may be a ground point. Uh, same thing with the maximum distance; that's the height above that ground point that something can be and, and still be considered a ground point. Okay, again, there's an illustration of all of this within the, uh, uh, the document for the lab. So we're gonna set these at, I think, what are more like the default parameters for, uh, for Metashape, and we're gonna go ahead and run that. All right, so uh, let that run. It took a couple of minutes to run that uh, classification, and uh, 
let's see what we got. So you'll notice that when it just comes up, it's, uh, it's like, hey, they didn't do anything. Well, we have to actually filter that dense cloud and uh, just get it to show the ground points. And so we're gonna use this filter by class method here. So I'm gonna click on that. And then uh, it's like, okay, what points, what classes do you wanna show? And so we'll turn all of these off. Uh, I'm just gonna select the first one and then shift select uh, to the bottom. And then holding the shift key down, if I click on any one of those check boxes, it turns all of them off. And then we'll just turn the ground one uh, back on and I'm gonna hit okay, and there we go. So it's uh, now removed the, the vegetation, uh, what it thinks are the vegetation points from the, uh, uh, from the model, and it's like, eh, yeah, okay, but it seems to uh, not be doing a really great job. It's just a bunch of vegetation stuff that it's still uh, picking up as, uh, uh, you know, thinking it's ground, right? Especially over here, you know, that's kind of a tree or a shrub there. So we're gonna, uh, we wanna try this again, maybe, you know, mess around with some different uh, settings for this. So to do that, we, get, we need to do a couple things first. So uh, the first thing is to uh, go in and reset the filter. Uh, so now it's gonna show us all the points again and uh, we're gonna go into the dense cloud and we're gonna reset the classification um, for these ground uh, points. It'll basically like, uh, uh, you know, remove that class and then just treat them all as unclassified again, okay? So, so now let's come back in here, dense cloud and uh, classify ground points again. And uh, we'll, we'll try you know, uh, a different angle here, and uh, and maybe we'll try a different uh, max distance, right? Uh, and so what you wanna do is just kind of play around with this, you know, the actual values that you end up with, um, you know, are gonna gonna just depend on uh, on what looks good to you and, and your different uh, options. You know, I've had uh, uh, the settings or the values that I think work pretty well, um, you know, I think everybody should go ahead and run this on their own and see where they get to. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more and see how good of a job that I can do. And then I'll, I'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll go on to the, to the next parts of the lab. All right, so here's my best uh, shot at classifying the, the ground points. You know, your final one that you come up with may be a, a little bit different than this, but I think this is gonna be good enough for our, for our purposes here. So the, now that we have the ground points classified, now we wanna start making our surface models. And uh, we're gonna do a couple of things here. So first, uh, just real quick, we're gonna make a DEM. So go to workflow, uh, build DEM. And uh, on this uh, options list here, we want to pick a projected coordinate system. There's some uh, information in the lab document itself that talks about why we choose a projected coordinate system or why we should. Um, uh, you know, we're in UTM zone 11 here. You can pick another coordinate system if that, uh, if that works for you. We just need to make sure that it has a linear unit uh, as the base for that coordinate system. So the source is our dense point cloud. Um, don't worry about the interpolation at the moment, but we're gonna first start with all of the points in the point cloud. So point class is all. And then uh, the rest of this information we can, uh, we, we can leave as it is. We don't need to set up a boundary because we already set that region. So it's going to just calculate the DEM within that region. Uh, resolution is gonna be you know, about what, not quite six centimeters. Uh, uh, ground sample distance, and so uh, I'm gonna, just gonna hit OK here and let that rip. Um, this will take a couple of seconds here to run, but it should be uh, pretty quick. And now, because we used all of the point classes, what we're going to get is what we would call a digital surface model. So it's going to be the maximum elevations from every one of the uh, uh, of the pixels, right? So it, it uh, at the resolution of six centimeters, it just laid a six centimeter grid over the point cloud and then calculated the highest point uh, within that, each one of those cells. So now I'm done and I can double click on the DEM over here 
and look at it. So, so notice a couple of things. Uh, one is that it restricted this just to the region that I defined, which is what I wanted, and uh, and does a really nice job at, at picking out all these elevations from my from our model. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, these are my elevation values from from you know 700 basically 780 meters to about 800 meters uh, in, in height. Okay, So this is our DEM. Now we want to actually exclude all of the vegetation and have it interpolate uh, the ground surface uh, beneath this vegetation. And in order to do that, we need to create another DEM. The problem is that if you just run the DEM function again, Metashape's just going to overwrite this DEM that we already created, right? Which is kind of a bummer. But so what we need to do here is actually duplicate this DEM. So if I right click, I can choose duplicate. Um, and yes, we want to duplicate it. And it created another DEM. And very helpfully, it named it DEM. Okay, so these are the same right now. Um, and if I just run this workflow build DEM again, it's going to overwrite one of these. Now the question is, which one is it going to overwrite? Well, if I right click on one of them, there's this first thing here that says set as default. And you can see it's not checked. And if I come down here to the next one, it is checked. And so Metashape will overwrite whichever one is set as the default. So it's going to overwrite this one. You'll also notice that the, the name here is in regular font, where the one that is not active is in italics, so it will always overwrite the one in, in sort of normal font. Okay, So let's change the name of this one. And since this is our digital surface model, we'll call it DSM. Okay, Now um, I'm going to go ahead and build my DEM again. Make sure you change your projection. Source is the dense cloud. Interpolation is enabled, uh, and that's important because we are going to use only the ground points this time. Okay, so it's going to create holes, and then we want it to interpolate or or fill in those those holes. Okay, so I'll go ahead and run this, and uh, and then what we're going to get then is a is a DEM that should be. A, an estimate of the ground surface. So there you go. Here's our our estimate um, ground surface underneath the plant canopy, and you can see it looks looks kind of like a lake, right? Because it's just done the best job it can at at trying to figure out where that ground surface was underneath the vegetation by interpolating the values around it. Okay, so this is going to work best in areas that are flat, but you know you can. Uh, Get kind of creative in in other situations too, okay? So let's rename this one. We're going to call this our DTM for our digital terrain model. And now the last thing that we want to do for this step of the lab is create a canopy height model. And so for that, I'm going to right click on my DSM and choose Transform DEM, okay? And uh, here's my coordinate system that looks good. For my parameters, I'm going to turn on this Calculate Difference option, and I'm going to select my DTM. And so what that's going to do is just subtract the DTM, the train model, from my surface model. Okay, And uh, we'll run that. Okay, And it's going to say, do you want to replace the default DEM, which means do you want to write over this terrain model? And I'm going to say no. And then it's going to create a new version, helpfully called DEM. So let's rename that one. Uh, we're going to call it CHM for canopy height model. OK, and this looks a lot like my, uh, my original surface model with a couple of big distinctions. Okay, One is that uh, the surface is largely flat uh, in this area. But importantly, the, the scale is different. Okay? This look, it looks like it goes from like negative 1 but if you uh, if you actually you know got the value at any uh, point in here, um, we can we can pull that actual value out. Um, right, we can see that the altitude there is is zero, right, which means that you know there is no difference between the surface model and the terrain model for these uh, ground points. Okay. Um, 
All right, so that's it. That's my canopy height model. So my canopy is going from, from basically zero all the way up to almost 24 meters at these uh, tallest trees, okay? So that's pretty cool. All right, so the last thing that we want to do with our, uh, for this lab, is to take some measurements for this, uh, uh, for this wood lot. And uh, to do measurements in Metashape, you have to first create a shape that it can take the measurements within. Okay, and there's a set of shape tools here. I just used one of them, which was the point tool, but there's polyline and polygon tools too. And so we'll start off just by doing an elevation profile. And uh, so I'm gonna grab the polyline tool and I'm just gonna come down here and click on the uh, map someplace. And you can create like whatever kind of polyline you want, however fancy you want. But you left click to start the line and then when you get over here to the end, um, you know, you can, uh, you can single click to uh, add a vertex here. And uh, um, when you're done, then you double click on it to end the, uh, the polyline, okay? And then it's going to open uh, um, a little box that uh, you can input some, uh, you know, attribute information in there for it. Um, it doesn't really matter what you put in there at this point. Okay. Now, when you're done, your your, your polyline tool is still active, right? So if you try to click around here, it's going to want to draw another line. So you need to switch back to the navigation tool. And, uh, and this line is selected right now, and we can tell that because it's red. If I, if I click off of it, uh, then it turns white, okay? So I wanna select that line, right click on it, and choose measure. And that's gonna bring this box up, right? Which gives me the coordinate values for each of my vertices and their altitudes. Uh, and it gives me the perimeter, which in this case is the total length of that line, which is about 188 meters. And then if I click here on the profile, this gives me then my elevation profile all the way along the line, right? So this is that, that first segment, this is the vertical segment, uh, and then this is that, the second segment of the line, okay? This is pretty cool, pretty useful stuff. Um, and then this length here is the length along the top of the, uh, of the profile, okay? So don't confuse that for the length of the line. Uh, if I wanna export this, then this is confusing, there's two save buttons. This first save button is gonna create a report for this, uh, this shape. That's not what we wanna do right now. We wanna click on this guy, which, uh, let me shrink that a little bit, gives me an option to save the profile graph. And uh, I'm gonna want you to save the graph so we can include it in the lab. Uh, you can actually save the graph as a shape file. I have no idea why you'd wanna do that. Um, so uh, just pick like a JPEG or a PNG format um, to, uh, to, to save that as to, uh, to include in the lab document, okay? Um, okay, so that is the uh, polylines. Let's do a polygon here and calculate canopy volume. Okay, so for polygons, uh, if we're gonna calculate volume, then we want to create a polygon that rings this whole area and you can decide to do the whole area or just a portion of it it doesn't really matter to me um, but the important thing for this tool to work right every one of your vertices so every one of these corners of the polygon needs to be on a ground location you can't put it in the in a plant canopy at all okay it doesn't really matter how far out it is though I think it's kind of best practice to keep it fairly tight. And then when you get to the end, double click on it and it'll close that polygon. Um, okay, we'll call it polygon for volume. And uh, so there's my polygon. Switch back to your navigation tool, right click and go to measure. Okay, uh, again, here's all of my altitude points. Um, Okay, or the altitudes for all of my vertices. Uh, here's the total length of the perimeter, and then here's the area uh, within that polygon, which is kind of helpful uh, information. Um, profile is gonna be pretty boring, right, because they were ground points all the way around. Um, volume, though, this is where it gets interesting, okay? So 
there's three options for calculating volume. There's best fit plane, there's mean level, and there's custom level. So what best fit plane is doing is taking the value, elevation values for each one of these vertices, and then it's actually like interpolating a ground plane or a like a flat plane surface from all of these vertex elevations. And then it's it's using that as the base from which to calculate the volume. Okay. Um, if you choose mean level, then it's going to take the altitudes for every one of these points, okay, and just average them all together, and that becomes the elevation from which you uh, you calculate your volume. And then the third option is is custom, where you actually give it a uh, a value. So in this case, we could just give it zero because we're working off a canopy height model. Um, the the ground level should have a uh, canopy height of, of zero, okay? So we'll use best plane uh, here. I think that's, uh, most of these should give you really pretty similar uh, values. Um, best fit plane seems to uh, work good when you have some sort of variations or, or undulations in topography. Uh, mean level works best if things are like totally flat, okay? Custom would work well if you had a, like you wanted to know a volume above a certain threshold or you know below a certain threshold, uh, that kind of thing. So, so best fit plane, here's your actual volume. So it's, it's you know, 26,000 cubic meters, okay, is the volume of uh, this, this plant canopy, all right? And then there are actually some uh, small portion of stuff that actually fell below that plane that would be like a hole or a void. Um, I think that's, you know, that, that, that's well within measurement error at this point. All right, so that's largely it, um, you know, for, for lab six. So make sure that you, uh, you save your project when we're done, uh, because next week in lab seven, we're going to uh, pick up from this point and uh, go forward with uh, looking at ortho mosaics and some tools in there. So uh, good luck. Let me know if you have any questions and, uh, um, we'll talk to you later.